I'm Tom Patton, and joining me now from Aspen Avionics is John Uzakai. And John, always a pleasure to talk with you. What are you seeing in the avionics industry? In this, it's, it's by all estimations been kind of a kind of a flat year. What's going on in this industry right now? And what are kind of the exciting things that you're seeing? Well. Things are, have been a little bit flat, but I think it's a lot of it's an anticipation of the ADSB mandate, which drives, you know, we talked a lot about the ADSB mandate for flying, transponders, things like that, but it really is generating the, the, the need for a customer to take his airplane in. And once you take his airplane in, there's so many possibilities that you can do to upgrade your aircraft right now. Obviously, we're in the glass display arena, mm -hmm. and that glass display arena connected with ADSB transponders and things like that creates choices for our consumers. Those choices now mean that a guy can bring his airplane in and upgrade the value of his aircraft, capability of the aircraft, safety of the aircraft. So what you see is a lot of us scrambling for that piece of the action mm -hmm. because the guy's going to have his airplane in there do his ADSB upgrade. And all of us are out there trying to find ways to uh, enhance our position on their aircraft. And that, I think, is going to create an exciting time coming up on the mandate. The mandate's starting to generate some momentum now mm -hmm. as we're getting closer, and it's pretty typical, as you might imagine. You kind of wait till the last minute. Um, but I think we're in for some exciting times in the next couple, three years for, for companies like ours and others that'll take advantage of this. When you say you're in for exciting times, are you talking about new products or yeah. just or just increasing the installments? No, I, I think it's a, a mixture of both. I mean, we love the installed base because we make more money, right? I mean, sure. more equipment. But I think um, as time goes on and what we have, a, we have a kind of a unique time in avionics where, where the electronics world, the certification world's playing to us, uh, making things a little bit easier to get through the system um, with the same level or higher safety, in fact, and that creates innovation because you want to catch your, your customer's attention. Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to see new products, new functions, you're going to see greater installed base. That installed base also generates follow-on uh, business. So I think it creates a fun time for us and a fun time for innovation, which is really what aerospace is about. It's about innovation. It's, that's what makes it fun. And to be honest, avionics is where 99% of the innovation is taking place in this industry at this time. Yeah, I, I think so. I think we're at a unique time that's kind of a confluence of a couple things. You've got lower cost technologies, displays, GPS navigators, um, transponders, the electronics world, the competition and the lower cost is coming to our market space. We've always, you know, we always get frustrated where a guy can go out and buy an iPad with incredible functionality for 900 bucks and you buy a display in our system with less functionality and you're paying $9,000. Those two things are starting to converge um, and that creates a lot of uh, opportunity for innovation. Mm -hmm. Plus, the FAA's movement towards Part 23 rewrite, some of the certified and non-certified, which is a bit of a misnomer because they're actually certified, sure. but a different manner, um, is creating more opportunities for innovation. And I think that creates excitement. And to be quite honest with you, you know, iPads, iPhones, things like that, that's become part of our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, our customers want that in their airplanes. They mm -hmm. want that type of flexibility. And, and I think that just, all those things just generate the, the possibility for innovation. When you talk about the Part 23 rewrite, how much impact is that going to have on your business? Okay, so for us, not so much yet, because we're in the early stages of it. So um, for our, when we do follow-on products, follow-on functions, uh, we're going to be able to bring them to market faster at a lower cost, which is, which I believe creates innovation, competition, and ultimately lower prices. I think that's what drives prices down is that. Um, so for us, you know, we'll be able to apply those standards or, or that the performance-based standards opposed to, to the prescriptive to our next products. And that gives us room for creativity. It gives us room for just, just thinking about doing things differently. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see that in the next coming years as each of us start doing that. And to be honest, FAs, they need to move along with the two, and they are. Mm -hmm. They're doing restructuring. They're bringing new people on board. They're, they're training on the new ways. We'll see that. I don't think you're going to see something immediately overnight that's going to affect, certainly not us, mm -hmm. but in our next products, and, next, and that's going to develop over time and accelerate products market. When you talk about bringing the, the smartphones and the mm -hmm. tablets and such into the cockpit, where is Aspen right now with getting that interface together where the, the, your 
panel mounted mm -hmm. avionics will talk to mm -hmm. uh, uh, electronic flight bag and such in somebody's, in somebody's phone. So we, we actually, I, we pioneered the concept of connected aircraft. We came mm -hmm. out with our first connected panel in 2011. We patented it, mm -hmm. and, um, and we had it interfacing with some older avionics. Um, since that time, those avionics that we interface with have, have changed their interfaces and things like that. Um, and so we have really refocused our connected panel in the OEM business. So, for example, on the Pilatus PC-12 and PC-24, we provide the connectivity to the avionics from an iPad device, and we're also getting more business in the air transport arena and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, because one of the things that connectivity, I, our industry still hasn't evolved to it, open systems is what makes connectivity fun. I mean, mm -hmm. when, you, when we first, the phones first came out, if you remember, the first, I remember the first car phone I had, the first time, I had to plug mm -hmm. it in to my mm -hmm. thing, and it had a special plug. Right. It was a special car mm -hmm. with a special plug, but it gave me all the functions that it did. Then Bluetooth came out, mm -hmm. and at first Bluetooth, not everybody played. Now, my Bluetooth hooks up with everything. Right. That's the next generation of connectivity in aerospace. We're still in the early phases of, I'll connect, but it's got to be my equipment. Right. And until we break through that, I don't think we're going to see the level of connectivity and what that brings to us that we are we become accustomed on a day-to-day basis. It's coming. Mm -hmm. We just aren't there yet as an industry. And so how does that affect how not only pilots interact with their airplanes, but airplanes talk to one another? So that's, you know, now you're talking next generation yeah. of cool stuff that could happen. Airplanes talking together, exchanging information between each other. Um, you know, we talk about TCAS in the, air, in mm -hmm. the airlines. You know, we could see a lot of that happening. You know, you start thinking about uh, internet connectivity in the air, whether they be balloons or UAVs, or, and now you're gonna have Wi-Fi connectivity in your airplane. Mm -hmm. So now you're talking about having information access, communicational access between airplanes, between grounds, and a level that we're seeing now on our iPhones. I absolutely see that coming. You'll see when, 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 the, when the internet providers start providing airborne internet services, in effect, airborne systems that you can connect Wi-Fi like you're on the ground mm -hmm. that are low cost, then you're going to see that technology in, the, in our everyday lives and flying. I actually think that's going to be one of the more exciting things about aviation because having that connectivity um, for information, communications, entertainment for your passengers is going to make bring a lot more people to flying. I believe that's what drives people to flying. But, and if I might play devil, that's devil's do. advocate here for a moment, when you talk about the guy who goes out and he's going out for his $300 hamburger, where does it reach an overload point? Where is there, where is there too much information yeah. in, the, in the cockpit? So I think you're, that's going to be a natural occurrence, um, not unlike with our phones. And everybody has a different level of overload, right? I mean, some mm -hmm. people are looking at their phones 100% of the time. Others look at those people and say, put your phone down, live your life, right? Mm -hmm. You're, I believe we'll go through the same thing. The different pilots will be different. That's what's so cool about the technology. Um, there's obviously safety considerations that have to be taken into account. You don't want mm. to be playing Angry Birds while you're flying an ILS <laughs> approach, for example. <laughs> but generally speaking, I don't think I don't think there is a definition for overload. I think it de it depends on the individual. It depends on your lifestyle. It depends on how you do it, and that's what's. That's what's so cool about the technology, because mm -hmm. you and I as an individual can disagree, but both be happy. Exactly. And I know we're talking a lot of blue sky here. I want to bring it kind of back down to, to where you are mm -hmm. with, with Aspen. What are you seeing as far as, as your core products are concerned, the, the uh, EFD products that, that you're putting mm -hmm. in people's airplanes? Are you finding there's, there's still a lot of acceptance for the for the way you're yeah. displaying the information yeah. and, and getting into yeah. into um, older model airplanes with upgraded equipment? So what we're actually seeing a trend now, and I think part of it's driven by ADSB because availability of data and mm -hmm. weather and so-called free traffic and weather. What we're seeing is that uh, we had a lot of single tube installs. And the primary purpose of that was if their, if their ADI failed or HSI failed, they went to that because it's expensive thing to have to replace an older electromechanical instrument. What we're seeing now is people are becoming more in tune with availability of information, and our system is really geared towards that. Multi-tubes, one, two, or three tubes, multi-windows. You're starting to see people say, well, wait a minute now, if I put in another tube, now I've got all this other information that I didn't have before, because mm -hmm. ADSB was not as, as ubiquitous as it's becoming now. It's not, 
So what we're seeing is more people opting for multiple displays and more people with single displays wanting to put multiple displays and to take advantage of having that d display in front of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we still have a very strong following of the people that, that will put in a primary flight display because of either a failure on their airplane or they want to move to glass or uh, all kinds of those reasons, those still exist, but what we're seeing is fundamentally a change where multi-tube displays, more information available is becoming more than norm. And we expect that trend to continue. And I think it's driven by what we just talked about, the mm -hmm. blue sky stuff. Availability data, display data, that people start becoming accustomed to it, they become comfortable with it, and then they want more. And that's what we're seeing. When you have people come up to your booth and, and uh, are you finding that people are, are still being exposed to what it is that ADSB and a lot of this stuff does for the first time? Or are people really pretty aware of, of what is available and now they're just picking a company? I think we're moving to the latter. We still have a lot of people that come to the booth that really want simple answers about what ADSB is and what it isn't. Um, what is free traffic and free weather is mean? Why do I need it on my display versus my iPad? Why, do, why is it good to have it in both? Um, but we're seeing more and more people saying, I want this, I want to display it on my display, but I also want to have iPad connectivity, and oh, by the way, I also want to have uh, uh, you know, a display on my, on my transponder. Mm -hmm. We're hearing people now being coming with requirements instead of with questions. I want to do this, and we provide them a solution where in the past, most people were saying, what do I need? Right. And I, I honestly believe the sales occur when the, when the pilot owner understands what they want, and then we go figure out how to make it, what they, mm -hmm. what make what they want. That's where the, the sales innovation and stuff starts to flow, and I think we're transitioning to that actually right now in the industry. What are they telling you they want now that is not currently available? Um, you know, I think what they want now is choice. Um, this sounds very simplistic, and I don't mean to oversimplify it, but they, I think, with just like whether you choose an iPhone or a Samsung phone or mm -hmm. whatever phone, um, they want choices. And so they want to be able to come in and say, I want to accomplish something, but I want to be able to choose. And, and that's where I think our owner pilot community is going to force us to more open networks. And we're, I actually, I'm not critical of us because mm -hmm. we're moving in that direction. And the FAA is moving us in that direction. Sooner or later, we're going to run up against cybersecurity issues and stuff mm -hmm. like that in an airplane. It's going to happen, right? And right. we're going to have to solve that problem next. But I see people wanting choice. And I think what you see at shows like this, that avionics producers, there's, there's enough of us out there, mm -hmm. and where there's enough of us finding innovative ways to do things, that those choices are coming through. And at the end of the day, as it should be, the consumer's going to, mm -hmm. going to de define where the market's at. And I think that's healthy for us. Do you see a day when there is a, a mix and match? Like back in the old days, you might have a Bendix King radio and a Rockwell Collins transponder and things of that nature? I think it has to happen. I mean, that's one of the things we're way behind on, right? I mean, if I go through in my home electronics, I can choose whatever TV I want, whatever kind of wireless boombox I want, or whatever phone I want, and I can connect it all up. I can walk in with, I, have, I carry Samsung and an iPhone. And I can connect both those up to my TV. Mm -hmm. I like that, right? I think we have to get to that point. It, the whole concept of closed systems is starting to deteriorate for in our industry and go away. But really open systems like you have in your home, mm -hmm. we need to get there because that, again, that drives competition, drives innovation, and it drives lower cost flying. And it also makes flying more interesting to maybe the people that d didn't grow up you know, at an airport. Mm -hmm. We need to draw those kind of people in the industry. And, and I believe electronics is one of those things that will drive in. The, the whole nature of flying, of course, is exciting. No mm -hmm. question about that. No, always be no a draw, doubt. always be a draw. But some of these people that, you know, want to fly, but they have other choices. And, mm -hmm. and the electronics part of it, and the avionics part of it, and the connectivity part of it, I think will draw some people into our world that are maybe earlier in their lives and become longtime pilots. Those are the customers we need. We need those kinds of customers to enter our industry. Do you find that the kid who's grown up with video games and and flight simulators and things of that nature, are are, are they far more interested in the kind of technology that Aspen and companies yeah. like yours are, are producing? So I, I want to tell you yes. I really want to say yes. <laughs> um, I, I don't know that that's a true statement. I What I do know is that when a kid that's been flying simulators and stuff like that kid, 
17 year kid, maybe mm -hmm. 20 year old, put them in an airplane and they see our Aspen stuff and they see it and they get to connect with their iPod and do stuff like that, their eyes light up. Mm -hmm. I put them in an electromechanical, they're more worried about dying in a flight. You know, they're more worried about the airplane not yeah. doing what's doing. They have these myriad of, of electromechanical things that their heads just spin. So I do think it is. I don't have any data to suggest that it does. But, but there's a familiarity. There is a familiarity, and I think you see it in their eyes when you put them in an airplane. So I, I really believe that that's, that's what's going to draw new people in industry more than any one thing. Well, we've talked a lot about Blue Sky. Um, maybe a little bit less far out there, but is there anything you can tell us that Aspen is working on now that we might look for at an AEA next year <laughs> down the road? You know, you guys always ask those questions. We always and do, I it. always, it's, it's obligatory. And I always beat around the bush, <laughs> because one thing, one thing that's happened in our industry is, is competition, time to market, catching mm -hmm. your competition off guard with a product or something like that mm -hmm. um, it, it is an edge. Um, I will tell you that where Aspen's going is exploiting our display base, exploiting our connected panel uh, potential, mm -hmm. because that market is, I call it a rodeo market, because mm -hmm. anything goes. Sure. Um, and, and I think what you find also is that you're going to see us do the things you would expect. Prove display capabilities, different size displays, different interfaces. But I think what you're going to see us come up with is more innovative ways to use the data that's provided to us in a more efficient manner to make flying safer and more fun. So that's about as detailed as I'm going to get you on that one. Okay, well that's a good place to, to leave it then, no. John, and we really appreciate your appreciate time. Appreciate it. Thanks so much and we'll look for you, I guess, yeah. at Sun and Fun and Absolutely. then in Wisconsin in July. Absolutely, looking forward to it. Great, John Uzakai right. with Aspen Avionics, thank you very thank much, you. sir. Appreciate Thanks. your time. Aero News Network's coverage of the 60th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from New Orleans, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Have you ever wanted big glass in your cockpit but didn't have the space? Now with Avidyne's IFD Series touchscreen GPS navigators and our new IFD 100 iPad app, having big glass in your cockpit is finally within reach. Free Flight Systems is expanding its business into the Part 25 aviation industry through new avionics shop dealers, manufacturer partnerships, and STC programs. With a focus on the next-gen airspace and remote-mounted sensor systems, Free Flight Systems will continue to be a leader in the next-gen airspace. Visit freeflightsystems.com for details.